Alrighty, welcome back. It's Chuck, and this is the video I told you earlier today that I was going to post uh, a video using a different exploit, one that we haven't taken a look at uh, so far in Metasploit. This is the, uh, the MS080667 exploit. Uh, we're going to hit the, the Windows XP box on this one. We're going to get into hitting Windows 7 here shortly, but uh, this particular exploit uh, works great on all versions of Windows XP, um, Server 2003, Server 2008, Windows Vista, of course anything earlier than that, um, and can work on 7 also. Now, to give you a little a little bit of background on, on this exploit before we, we jump right into it, in 2003, Microsoft came out with, with Patch Tuesday. Uh, so, you know, when we type in this exploit, we type in the MS080667, that, that does actually mean something. MS, of course, stands for Microsoft. 08 is the year that the patch was released, and 67 is meant as the 67th patch of the year. Now, this particular patch was an out of band patch. This was a critical security patch that Microsoft did not wait until Tuesday to put out. Uh, it was one of 10 out of band patches that year if I'm not mistaken. I think there were 10 of them. Uh, this one was issued uh, as a hot fix, as an immediate fix um, on a, oops, got a script there, an immediate uh, hotfix on a vulnerability on XP and uh, Server 2003 that an attacker could uh, break into a machine without any user intervention at all. Now, strangely enough, if you Google MS080667, you'll get the uh, Microsoft TechNet uh, information on the patch and then directly underneath of it you will get the Metasploit Rapid7 community on how to get around that patch. So it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. So we're going to have some fun here. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and launch my terminal window here and out of the box would be uh, pleased with me. There's my green my green text. And I have to make sure I don't remember if it started or not. So let me go ahead and start my database. Start Metasploit. gets up and running. There we go. Start my MSF console. And the great thing about this exploit, it's a, it's a pre-written exploit. Um, we can build the payload, we can build the handler and everything all together and go ahead and hit the machine right off the bat. It's taking a minute here to build my console. Too much other stuff running in the back. There we go. And as you can tell, I do have my XP box back here in the back up and running. All 
Alright, and there's my console. So I'm at my MSF prompt. Now, I'm going to use an exploit. It is a Windows exploit, of course. So our message block ms08 underscore 067 underscore Natapi. Okay. The only thing I really have to uh, have really three things in here that I have to give it. First thing I have to give it is the remote host. And in my case it's 192.168.1.250. That's my XP box, the IP address of my XP box, which of course you'll figure out by doing uh, your reconnaissance. All right, so that's my remote host. Now I have to set my payload, which is going to be my interpreter. Let me see. Oops, E R P R E T R interpreter, and I'm going to do a standard reverse TCP because, of course, I need to get the session sent back to me, and I need to tell it where to send it. So, my IP address, 192.168.1.8. Okay. Now, all we have to type in now is show targets. Yeah, and here we go. Here's all Windows 2003, Windows XP. There's all types. When I'm looking for, it's probably going to be somewhere around 5 or 6. There it is. Windows XP, Service Pack 3, English. Or I could do 7 also, that would work too. So, 6. X, XP, Service Pack 3. Which again, you're going to find that out when you're doing your, your recon. So that's number 6. So we just have to remember that we want to... Our target is going to be number 6. So I'm going to set my target for 6, which just tells the exploit that I plan on hitting the XP Service Pack 3 box. And I'm going to type exploits. Now we're going to just sit here and wait for a minute. You will see it say send the stage. And I'm giving them a interpreter prompt. Okay, well, all right, I'm giving them a interpreter prompt. With, of course, with the interpreter prompt, it, it just means I'm on the machine. Well, there's something else that we can do inside of here, which is pretty cool. There, now, we, do we have to do this? No, because watch this. Look at what I'm logged in as. I'm logged in as system which means I can run a hash dump. I can get the SAM file uh, so I can get all of their hashes. I can drop their hashes in a rainbow table. I can get their passwords. I got their usernames because I'm going to get their SAM file and I can figure out everything from there. But what if you don't want to do all that? What if you don't want to go through that? Well, there's something else we can do. We can go incognito. Incognito at one time used to be a standalone machine but it's part of Metasploit now. What Incognito does, it's a token stealer. So think of a token very similar to being the same thing as a, as a web cookie. It's a temporary key that allows me to access the system without having to constantly put in my credentials every single time I, I jump servers or access a file. Okay, So, there's two types of tokens. There's delegate tokens and there's impersonate tokens. De delegate tokens, they're your interactive tokens. They're your logging into machines. Uh, your impersonate tokens are um, domain scripts and things like that. Now, tokens are persistent. Well, they persist until a reboot. 
They're not persistent. They don't hang around forever, but they persist until a reboot. Now, when the user logs off, a delegate token turns into an impersonate token. So, one thing that we're going to do, instead of instead of running a hash dump and having to, to break their, their hashes, or compare their hashes, I should say, uh, to figure out their password, we're just going to say, use incognito. Okay. Now, all we have to do is tell it to list the tokens. And we're going to list it by groups. Oh, look at that. So we have local, we have network, we have system, we have malloc, and we have some impersonation tokens, which is anonymous. Wow, well, malloc would probably be a good one because being as that's the only login on this machine other than the system logins, the empty authorities, I'm pretty sure that was the administrator. So, I want that token. So what am I going to do? I am going to impersonate token when XP. Now, this is the only thing that, that's buggy with this thing. It took me forever to figure this out, and I actually had to Google it to figure it out. When you put in the domain, this case is a work group, but when you put in the domain, you can't just put a single backslash. You have to put double backslashes. Okay. And then I'm going to put the one I want to impersonate. Now, I am logged in as that administrator. The user didn't have to download anything. Didn't even know I'm on the machine. But I'm on the machine as them. Again, why does this come in, you know, so much more handy? Well, again, you know, system is local. I can do a ton of things from system on that particular machine. But, if this machine is part of a domain, I can steal the token and now I can daisy chain to other machines in the system from this machine. Wherever this person has rights to, I have rights to because I'm carrying his token with me. If they go to prompt me for a username and a login, I'm just going to give them the token, in which case I'm going to get in. And the user is none the wiser. They didn't have to download anything. They didn't have to accept anything. They can even be on their box. But I am now browsing the network with their credentials, and they've never seen it. So I can easily start a shell session, of course. Oops, I typed too quick. <laughs> How about SL? So I'm now on their system. And now I have to switch to DOS commands. I can upload files, I can download files, I can delete files. And again, this works flawlessly for, for Server two, well, really Vista and back. Server two thousand three and back. It always works. Um, Vista and Server two thousand eight. It was an important update. Seven. I've been able to get it to work with seven. Uh, at times, it is it is a little flaky. Sometimes it won't take the token. Um, haven't tried it on newer versions like uh, like ten, um, but. You find a machine that's got XP, it's your machine. You got right into it. All right. 
So guys, that is just uh, playing around with incognito and uh, our new SMB MS08067 Natapi exploit. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, again, keep hitting that, that like button, subscribing to the channel. Let me know if there's anything you want to see. I'll be glad to make it for you. But until next time, this is Chuck, a.k.a. Malik, and I'm out.